Welcome back for another video. The Expert series is a huge community project of hundreds of FPL experts providing top insight every game week. Some of the greatest FPL managers to have ever played the game, including a bunch of top content creators. Every week we reveal the Experts team before the deadline, and plus we look at their transfer plans, captaincy, chip usage and more. This wisdom of the crowd approach will guide you to better decisions and a better rank, plus win your mini leagues. So if you'd like to follow the series throughout the season, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. The top expert after Game Week 1 is FPL Kush, currently ranked 6.6k overall after scoring 95 in Game Week 1. His rank history includes a 9k finish, 11k, 21k and a few further top 100k finishes. Well done on an excellent start, already inside the top 10k. Next up, the transfer activity among the experts. Around two thirds of the experts are rolling the transfer heading into Game Week 2. A few have sent comments on this decision which we'll cover at the end. 31% have made one transfer and 1.3% have taken a minus 4. 0.7% of the experts have got a chip active instead, more on that shortly. As far as which players the experts are transferring in and out, the Kane to Haaland switch dominates the transfer activity this week. A couple of managers have included Haaland as part of a minus 4 transfer already, with a hit their only route to picking him up. Kane's ownership is expected to plummet to under 10% among the experts in Game Week 2. Only four of the experts that made a transfer used theirs on a player other than Haaland, after Kane mounts the second most popular transfer out. A quick look at the chip usage and then we'll take a look at the captaincy in the expert team. You may remember from episode 1 that Frelick FPL used the bench boost in Game Week 1, somewhat successfully I might add with 17 points coming from the bench. It's an interesting way to utilise the chip with the most common approach normally in double game weeks. He mentioned that the plan was always to wildcard immediately out the bench boost which is exactly what he's done. He shared his wildcard draft which is on screen now. If you are on an early wildcard then this one will be of particular interest. He sent over some thoughts as well which were, after the bench boost I'm keeping the best bits of the template and then predicting where the game will go with the rest, trying to get ahead of the game. So kudos to Fredo for not being afraid to go against the pack. Best of luck to him this season, searching for his 7th top 10k or 3rd top 1k. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the experts tackle the first half of the season. We may see some chip experimentation with the World Cup coming just after Game Week 16. Perhaps some opportunities to play a more aggressive wildcard. Onto the expert captaincy and the majority have got the armband on Haaland with 84.8% of the vote. Despite the clean sheet, Bournemouth conceded 31 crosses in the Villa game, 6 more than any other team. If they let up nearly as many again, it could be a bloodbath for the Etihad. That said, Salah with just 13.2% of the vote surprisingly low. Time and time again there have been occasions where we overlook Salah and he goes on to score highest. It's a lot closer than the percentages suggest. Harlem minutes are still an uncertainty. If the game's wrapped up by half time, it comes as no surprise if he's withdrawn early again. Salah, on the other hand, much more reliable for 90 minutes. The Game Week 2 projections have the two of them pretty much even on predicted points. 1.3% have got the armband on Cancelo, 0.7% on De Bruyne. The premium defenders are a very consistent stream of points, perhaps a lower ceiling than the likes of Salah and Haaland, though they put up plenty of double digit hauls themselves. It's interesting that Cancelo is third, albeit just a few managers. Onto the expert team reveal for Game Week 2. This is the aggregated team of their high stone players within budget. The team is as follows. As expected, Haaland replaces Kane on the template team and Salah vice captain. This is the high stone team within budget, so there's 1.5 mil in the bank. I've added the ownership percentages from last game week down the left hand side so you can see not just the most popular players among the experts but also in comparison to the overall player base. This is invaluable for identifying players the experts are hot on which the overall player base might be overlooking. For example Ward is 97% owned, he's the only 4 mil keeper that's currently playing and only 26% overall. Pereira looks the best 4.5 mil midfielder with 90% ownership among the experts and one you can even star at 25% overall. And lastly, Martinelli was on the score sheet game week 1, backed by 88% of the experts, but only 26% overall. If this video has been useful and you appreciate the research for each episode, please drop the video a like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks for all the support. Right now, the expert template looks very strong, with all 11 starters playing at home. It is a calm week as far as transfers. As we saw, the most popular decisions this week were Haaland in if they didn't own him, or roll if they did. If we see Nunez hold this game week, or Liverpool concede, then the template could shift quickly. It'll be interesting to see how the template evolves. Likewise, if Mitrovic returns again, there could be a gradual formation shift in the team. Each game week, we ask the experts to offer their insight for the game week ahead. DMP Wright says, Salah and Haaland captaincy decisions very close in my opinion. Salah probably just shades it for me due to the extra points for goal and clean sheets. Unless your team's in a really bad way, I'd also advocate rolling the transfer this week. 
Sharp Luke says, rolling the free transfer of one eye on Darwin, thinking a possible change in team structure if he starts and performs. H. Benjamin says, when a 50-50 call goes wrong, Ken of Harlan and Gamic 1 for example, you just gotta roll with the punches and remember that FPL's a marathon, not a sprint. FPL Khaki says, feeling lucky that I landed on the right side of Harlan v Kane because Kane owners have a tough decision ahead of them if they haven't already made the move before the price changes. Root Cause says, Salah v Harlan's a difficult captain choice. Harlan passed the eye test more though, a City played great at times and you can see the potential there. Salah perhaps got lucky with his returns, but going against him does come with its risks. FPL Nima says, I'm eagerly awaiting the Chelsea v Spurs match to get a much better idea of where both teams are at for the season ahead. Also closely monitoring the idea of three forwards and an early wildcard in Gimmick 5. Andrew Debenham says, I'll be observing the pattern of substitutions that managers are making. For example, are certain managers making their subs at 65-70 minutes? If so, this increases the chances of a defender clean sheet. Conversely, it decreases the chances of an attacking return. I think the new 5 subs rule will impact overall point scoring. And lastly, FPL Blue Islander says, I'm expecting Kane to bag a hattie at Chelsea now. Good one to finish on, it'd be really typical FPL if that happens. Thank you as always to our experts for their continued participation and their insight. That concludes episode 2 of the experts, thanks for watching. If you found it useful, please like the video and subscribe for weekly content to come all season. See you soon for the next one.